Well, a bit of scurry being put under the drivers, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Most of these ponies are uh, from our famous native mountain moorland breeds. A lot of them uh, have Welsh blood, and of course, uh, so quick on their feet, able to twist, turn, and gallop. They love it. They really do love it. And uh, this competition that uh, great late uh, Raymond Brooks Ward put together now, uh, many years over, 30 years ago, and of course, it's more than stood the test of time. One of the uh, Famous competitions at the Horse of the Year show that is uh, now being copied and used around the world. But certainly as popular as ever and very skillful, very skillful indeed. If you're a driver, learning, believe me, it's not easy peasy. Uh, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of skill. Sort of halfway through, I would think, reaching the halfway point, if not quite there, of the outdoor season. So the plan is. Certainly should be fit, and I think we can describe uh, the going as on the soft side of good. Certainly not deep. The little ponies might have short little legs, but uh, they won't disappear. Are you happy, Mr. Price? Oh, Mr. Price is happy. That's good news. That's extremely good news. We must get that to the BBC because uh, that is definitely a health uh, warning avoided. Well, find your seats and enjoy the thrills and excitement of scurry driving. We've got uh, eight in our small class. Smalls there under uh, 122 centimetres. The old 12 hands. And we're ready to roll. And interestingly enough, it is Liz Oliff with the rock and roll from Christchurch in Hampshire. Liz now been going uh, well over 10 years. And... Uh, she is certainly one of our top drivers. Away we go. It's uh, rock on the left, roll on the right. Stable names are Casper and Jasper, actually. And we go into the box. Take a bit of a time check coming out of the box. And fence three goes through on the right rein and uh, comes out in 15 seconds. A little bit of a, a turn here. No, in fact, down the slalom. Next, slalom at five. Secret here to keep close to those bollards, but not too close, and have it down. Then you keep the rhythm up. Nice, gradual turn around the top. Still clear, nothing to add at the moment. Here's the gallop down the arena. Now on the right rein. Relatively quiet uh, start of the season. Children have been very busy with the pony club. So mum has to take second place, but she still can drive. This is a good start. Clear and pretty quick. This is the last. Home they come. Give them a hand. That's a good start. 63-48. Nothing to add. That's uh, Liz Olive. Rock and roll. Both well section A's. Both now 18 years old, but loving life. Sally Marshall next up, L for leather. Husband Danny on the back. Oh, I'm not sure, is that right? No, I don't think that's Danny. Or is it Danny? Well, Sally anyway is a master saddler. Owns and runs uh, Marlow Saddlers. And of course in that pretty Thames village. With husband Danny, they have a small holding. Uh, they rear uh, rare breed pigs, parcha pigs. Do some lovely sausages. Some free range hands, but they love their scary driving. L on the left, L4, and leather on the right. Jason 
Sally qualified for the Horse of the Year show in the Suffolk County. And incidentally, Sally spent her honeymoon in 2014 at the Horse of the Year show. That is real love, isn't it? Through the box, out rather slowly in 21 seconds. Sally's fourth season, actually. Does uh, indoor and outdoor driving trials. Recently won a marathon at Windsor. Park Equestrian Club there. And I suspect these are the young ponies that Sally has. She's just giving them a little bit of an easy run to get the hang of the job. Nothing uh, in this sort of world is instantaneous. You've got to practice, you've got to train, and driving is exactly the same. It's all about control. Turning for home, nothing to add. But what is good news is that the going is uh, in pretty good nick. And that's good for these ponies. Through the last, and they're home. 86-96. Now it's Alison Tucker. Alison, been managing the Osborne stables of scurry driving ponies and driving ponies for many years and a very accomplished scary driver. Got uh, Woody and Buzz. And this uh, go fast um, Osborne refrigerator carriage. Osborne refrigerators, Woody and Buzz and Julie Baker on the back. They qualified at the Bath and West for Hoys. And this is uh, a really powerful pair. Alison been with the Osborne team for many years, but uh, only actually been driving with six of those. I got her over to Dublin a couple of years back, three years ago now actually, and really showed how capable she was. This is looking good, much more competitive. Ponies working together, look at that, lovely. That's good scary driving, keeps close to those cones. She also competes very successfully with a, a lovely hat she's got in uh, showing classes. Vast experience. Woody the Pony on the left, a well section A, and uh, Buzz on the right, both 10 year olds. She's looking good, nothing to add. Now down the home straight, a little bit of cheering will help, the ponies love it. That's good, well done. 55, 56, looking good, this could be the new leader. 59, 60, 61, 28. Well done, Alison Tucker. New lead up and nothing to add. Very, very smart piece of driving, Alison. Well done. Practice been going well, I can tell. Well, now one of the youngsters that have come into the game, just 17 years old, it's James Starr. Kent, pick and mix. And it's mum on behind. Very brave, our mum. Angela, she's, uh, I think she's taken the code in. It'll be all right. James, national junior trials champion, national intermediate champion, reserve indoor champion. He's a very exciting young man. In the GB trials, training with the great Boyd Exile, an Australian world champion. And she's been helping this great driving with Charlotte Adams. Oh, we missed a, missed a turn there. Now we'll have lost in time, but he's out. Nothing, no seconds to add, I don't think. Judge is in a good mood, that's good. If the judge is in a bad mood, oh, you know, it's, it's a rotten afternoon, but they're in a good mood. It's wonderful, wonderful. Through the slalom. Come on, James. Again, well section A ponies, these six and seven years old. Just look how they get down, they get lower. That's gone. There's four to add. That's four to add. 
qualified for the championship at Hickstead recently, this uh, combination. And we're not seeing James at his best this afternoon, 17 years old. He's been driving since he was 10. He hadn't, he is, he was out of nappies, they say, tell me at 10. So it was all right. Down to the last. Well done, James Starr. Four to add. 79.08. Check with the judges, see if they're counting his right. Oh, yeah, they, the fingers are coming out. 79.08. So still, Alison Tucker leading with Woody and Bell, 61.28. Then it's uh, Rock and Roll, is only 63.48. Remember, we take six through, eight in it. So that James Starr of 79.08 and Sally Marshall, 86.96, are looking a little vulnerable. Kelly Sawyer next. Kelly from Buckinghamshire, Pebbles and Bam Bam. And the groom, the little bouncing ball himself. Yes, good afternoon, Gareth Roberts. Kelly's second season. In fact, uh, her first event was at New Forest. End of July last year. Trained and guided by Gareth Roberts. That's a bit of a worry, really. But there we go. Also, Gareth's fiance. Kelly sponsored by her family business, Pendle Rug Cleaning. Pebbles on the left, Bam Bam on the right. Again, both Section A. Section A, remember, are the smallest of the Welsh mountain ponies, so it's no wonder they're good on their feet. Out in 16, that's pretty good. Nicely through this lap. Oh, that's gone. Two, four to add. Four to add. Kelly and uh, Gareth get married in September this year. So, uh, an exciting summer ahead for them as they head for home. Come on, let's have a cheer as they go home. Come on, Kelly. Kelly Sawyer from Buckinghamshire. One left, four to add, 63.83 completion time, and it's 67.87, goes third at the moment. All oh, these judges, they're magic, oh, they're so good at counting, wow. They'll be in the Bank of England soon. Three to go. It's the governor. It's Geoffrey Osborne. Twitter and tweet. And let me tell you, Geoffrey is the best Twitter there is in the world. He's always twittering and tweeting. And Alison and Tucker is the groom on board. Let me tell you a little secret. Geoffrey is 81 years old. Driving for over 30 years, but he goes faster and faster. Clear of the box. Osborne Refrigerators, of course, based in Bognor Regis, known all over the world for their com commercial refrigerators for businesses. And uh, the uh, ponies here, little Dartmoor ponies. Well, one of Dartmoor pony anyway. Twitter is the Dartmoor pony, the 11 year old, the brown pony. And Tweet is a, a Section A. Four to add, four to add. Ah, uh, Timothy on the ball, as they say. Turning for home. Now, has Jeffrey gone quick enough to get four seconds added on and still qualify? Come on, Jeffrey. Cheer him on. He really is a great supporter of the equestrian world. And four more, four at the last. That'll cook that goose, I'm afraid. Eight to add on the 67. One, one makes that uh, 73. One, one. And Jeffrey will have to be watching the championship from the sidelines. 75-1-1. Yep, the judges have got it right. 75-1-1. Still Alison Tucker leads. Woody and Buzz, 61 2 8 It's on it. Second rock and roll. Third then is Kelly Sawyer, Bam, Bam and Pebbles. 
And now it's Chris Orchard. Chris Orchard with Touch and Go. Chris, who's put her Ascot hats away after last week, all tucked away, so she's down to the hard hats now. Chris Orchard from Western in Kent with the carriage house insurance bonuses, ponies touch and go. Charlotte Kenyon, the groom, he's squaring for a while. One of the small classes of the Horse of the Year show in 2013 and 2014. She also got a very good large pair, rough and tumble. Now down the slalom. Look, everything colour coordinated. That is typical of Chris Orchard. Loves to get it right. Good turn. Very smooth. Time on the clock, 39.40. 40 seconds. Nothing to add at the moment. I think you've got to stay clear to stay in the top six, I think. At the moment, vulnerable is uh, Sally Marshall and James Starr. Four to one. Nine has gone. Yep, cheer the bomb. Well done, Grandstand. Through the last, just the four to add. So with four to add, that makes that 68.76. That might be still good enough to qualify for Chris Orchard. Still it's Sally Marshall and James Starr, and even Jeffrey Osborne might get through to the championship. Two, six to qualify, and one to go. And this could be the favourite. That is Charlotte Adams Lane. She's keeping her best coast under cover, because it might get wet, and then she might get Penobia. Charlotte Adams Lane from Chessington in Surrey, with the balanced horse feeds, Chaz and Day. Charlotte won the Sky Drive of the Year 2013, it was. Already qualified for the Horse of the Year show at South of England recently. And uh, husband, Ian, they run balanced horse feeds from their family farm in Chessington in Surrey. Ian on the uh, groom's uh, box this afternoon. These actually are uh, Dutch ponies, section A. Chaz on the left, Dave on the right. Very experienced ponies. They've literally won all over the country. <coughs> Very quick off the mark, these ponies. And they like this going, they really do. Good driving to the sharp through the slalom. Charlotte, who's uh, helped to coach many new uh, drivers in the scurry world. Now, could this be chasing Alison Tucker's uh, Leading score at the moment, 61.28. This is quick. Four left to go. This is worthy enough to go YouTube live. This could be quicker. This could go into the lead. Cheer them home. Close. Very close. Not quite. 61.31. Three hundredths of a second behind Alison Tucker. Good drive, give her a hand, really good drive. Well done, Charlotte. Top six that will qualify for tomorrow's uh, championship will be Alison Tucker, the winner, Woody and Buzz, 61.28. Second, Charlotte Adams, Balance, Chaz and Dave, 61.31. Third is Liz Olive with Rock and Roll, 63.48. Fourth, Kelly Sawyer, Pebbles and Bam Bam, 67.87. Fifth, Critch Orchard with Touch and Go. And sixth, Jeffrey Osborne, Twitter and Tweet. That's the sixth that'll be in for the presentation of awards.
and at two. They'll be featuring in our championship tomorrow. Well, a big thank you to Osborne Refrigerators. 1961, uh, that company was formed based down in Bogdan Regis, as we said earlier. Very much a world leader of point of sale food, beverage, milk, and wine coolers. And uh, today, distributed in the UK and worldwide to all the leading soft drink, beer, and wine producers. So, uh, if you want to see more, pop into their website www.osborne-ref.co.uk. So I think Tim Price is going to get a kiss from Alison Tucker. Oh, no, she's not. And, and uh, Tim Price, of course, uh, our course designer, and uh, Alison Tucker, our winner. Well, delighted to welcome uh, James Bank, High Sheriff of Norfolk, to uh, present the awards. So James Mag, together with uh, Grant Pilger, saying congratulations to Alison. <laughs> lovely, round, lovely round, actually, from Alison and Woody and Buzz. They're obviously informed, like the going, a bit of cut in the going. In second place, another driver with huge skill. Well done to Charlotte Adams Lane with Balance, Chaz and Dave. And I don't think Ian will have to do too much cooking tonight now. They've uh, gone so well and qualified. Third place, Liz Olive, coming up to holiday soon, so the kids will take over. They're into their pony club in a big way, the Olive kids. Liz Olive with uh, rock and roll in third. Fourth, Kelly Sawyer. Kelly Sawyer with Pebbles and Bam Bam. Gareth Roberts knitting the socks for the wedding in fourth was uh, Kelly Sawyer fifth is Chris Orchard yes wave wave do wave to Chris she loves people waving I wonder whether she won any money at Ascot with that fancy hat on again. She would have had a special hat for Ascot. So Chris Orchard in fifth touch and go. She'll be back tomorrow. And uh, in sixth, Uncle Geoffrey Osborne. You're not looking miserable, Geoffrey, are you? No, of course you aren't, Uncle Geoffrey. He'll be back tomorrow. Well done, Scurry drivers. Some very good driving this afternoon, and we look forward to championship time tomorrow. And of course, we've got the large ponies tonight. And we've got some lucky recipients of a little ride round our Norfolk Grand Ring. Our High Sheriff of Norfolk, James Bag. And uh, another of our guests, too, jumping on the back of Liz Oli. So let's give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Some great scurry driving and more to come later and the championship tomorrow.
got to go to the horse world, I think. Sheriff hanging on but enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> Safely returned. What do you do here at the Love the Broads stand? Love the Broads is a registered charity which encourages visitors to the Broads and residents to give a little bit of money to pay back for the impact that they have on this fantastic national park environment. So what sort of donation are you thinking? What works? Well, what works for us is that if a visitor to the Broads gives just one pound onto the hire of a boat or on a tempe on a cup of coffee, all that money comes to us and that money we then give away for projects on the Broads. So how much would you be hoping to... I don't know how many people can visit the Broads on average. Is there a how figure on that? How would you say, Dan? More than a tenner, that's for sure. 100,000? That many, hey? No, it's actually over 7 million. 7 million visitors. So just think, if we got 7 million quid, what we could do on the broads. Good, and I'm guessing that would go towards not just projects or like fixes now, but also years to come. Correct. Keep it the, the area of beauty that we like. Correct. And we've funded so far in four years, 14 projects. Nearly £60,000 has gone into projects on the broads to keep it special for the future. Beautiful. Well, best of luck with that project. Thank you. But also, I want to quickly mention about the Norfolk show. It's a fabulous occasion every year, isn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. Like a couple of years ago, it was baking hot. I was complaining then. I'm not <laughs> quite sure what I prefer. I think I'd prefer it hot. We're the exact same. Do we prefer it then or prefer it now? Either way, there's many, many people here in over two days of the yeah. whole event. I'm sure and this is a great visitors. village as well. They've yes, got it is. All, all of these activities. It's very interactive. We've got a competition here that children can pick a boat from the broads. There's lots going on. Too much for a day, actually. You need two days at least. Well, I know you're here for both days. We are. Uh, so thank you so much for chatting to us, Lynn. Thank and of course, you. you can find us here at the end of Avenue 1, right by the lake. This pack is only just down the road at Wacton, and uh, they have about a 50 mile uh, radio sensor around the sound of the Thank you. 
formed by the loss of the field in 55 couple of line bred modern English foxhounds being kenneled at Nacton. This is a long established uh, mastership representing some 15 seasons on their continuity and they hunt uh, three mornings a week with the odd day in the autumn amounting to perhaps four when the chance is there. As ever all these packs they are immensely grateful to the farmers landowners and the shooting community of Norfolk who allow access time and time again. You'll find this with every hunting pack that uh, not only are they very active on the field, but also socially. And they do welcome you to go along and join a number of the events that they put on. Uh, out on, uh, out on horse, bike, car, or on foot. So as you see them being paraded around, you'll note they are very distinctive. The Harriers, uh, significantly smaller than the fox hat. And so for the families who are around there, there will be the opportunity to bring the children in and uh, get up close and uh, see the hounds very, right up close. They are incredibly friendly. Uh, but please, if, uh, it's probably not going to happen today, but don't bring ice cream or food in, otherwise you will get inundated by the hounds. They're there, they are very friendly, so again, when the time comes, don't be shy, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, lift your children over the barriers, deposit them into the ring, and join them if you like, ladies and gents. Uh, everybody's there, they're all happy to be seen. So if I can ask the packs, if they'd like to sort of gather into the middle, and if they wouldn't mind dismounting, and uh, the horse is being led away. So there they go. Mr. Saville blowing the horn there beautifully for you. Yep. Hopefully you'll find the fruit sort of come through first and you should get a nice sort of uh, spice really nice. at the Loving end there. Alright, is there the other, the other one as well? And the other one here is uh, London Dry. <laughs> More please. Uh, this one we use tonga beans in, which we are one of the first uh, in England to use tonga beans. Is that the right way of like tasting it or do you just go oh, right Yeah, how do you taste? What do you I mean, mean, I just get in. <laughs> there you go. So, which is your favourite, the, the white or the pink? Which I really like the white actually. The white. I I the Thank you. It is the world's best. Yeah. It's the world's best for a reason. <laughs> oh, well, do you have a personal favourite? Or which is uh, yeah. My personal favourite is is the uh, is the London Dry, but I prefer a standard gin rather than a flavoured gin. I like to taste the botanicals properly. But I mean, both are great. Both are great. And what's going down best with the crowd? Are they trying both? Are people impressed? To today, the strawberry is flying out. Um, I'm going through. Like, I've nearly done a bottle of tastings of that already. So the strawberry is going out strong today. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I'm, I thought the weather might have slowed it down a bit, but it hasn't. To be honest, still going strong. Well, right. I know you're busy. The queue is. Vast past I'm distracting you, so you crack on. Lovely, thank, uh, you, thank you so much. And it's up to you whether you go for the pink or white or both. Why not? It's not for shame. Yeah. Hello, I'm John Ash. I'm a trustee of Wherry Yacht Charter. We're based in Wroxham and we have five wherries, two pleasure wherries and three wherry yachts. We look after these uh, five boats and they're all wooden boats all over 90 years old, four of them over 100 years old, which obviously takes quite a lot of money and time in maintenance and obviously quite a lot of skill as well. I've been involved in the Broads in one way or another for the last 40 years and very interested in the heritage of the Broads and working with Wherry Yacht Charter actually is one way of bringing that heritage for other people to enjoy and to be as passionate about it as I am. So the Royal North Show is a great opportunity for us. This is my show story. My name is Megan Jenkins and I live and work on the farm here at the farm which will breed and use 30 animals, most of which are pedigree red poles. Norfolk Show celebrates everything agricultural and for me it's, it's a great place to socialise and network with like-minded people and in the show ring months. Each year we take approximately 10 animals to compete in their breed classes including Heathgate Eliza who was breed champion at the Norfolk Show last year and will return this year to fight for the title. This is my show story. Back for the impact that they have on this fantastic National Park environment. So what sort of donation are you thinking? What works? Well, what works for us is that if a visitor to the Broads gives just one pound onto the...
patience. Martin Goimer on the box. With the Banham Sioux turnout. Banham, of course, one of the great attractions of uh, the East Anglian uh, Tourist Board. Then from Scotland, John McIntyre. His uh, pair from Scotland, John McIntyre with the Clydesdales. Following that, past the judges' box, the Clydesdales of Gowan Holmes. Sorby and Jake, the Clydesdales. Then the Pershrens, good to see them for the first time. The Park Pershrens of Tom Henfrey. Tom, uh, a man who's following on very much in the family's footsteps and uh, really expanding the uh, tremendous experience they have. The turnout, uh, Joe Roper, another man here from East Anglia, very much on his uh, home ground. And uh, he with his pair of black Persians. Passing the judges' box, the Aussie Chaff pair of uh, David Lambert. David Lambert from uh, Nottinghamshire, and uh, he down at the main grand ring here, just turning in the corner up on the grandstand. On the Dave Moonan, he's got his pair. The uh, animals we saw in earlier in the afternoon. It's a really good turnout this afternoon. And here comes Glen Cass, such shahs with Glen Cass. Marlon Country bring uh, their pair of shahs in for the King George V Perpetual Challenge Cup. Well, we're going to have a real uh, ring of uh, lovely heavy horse turnouts because also in this pairs we'll have the. Uh, Class for the pairs for the agricultural turnouts. Two of those pairs are expecting, and we'll tell you more about those when they join us in a moment or two's time. So, real history, colour, and excitement with our uh, pairs, turnout classes for the uh, King George V Perpetual Challenge Cup, and then the uh, pair of heavy horses in harness to a wagon or tumble with no springs, and that will be for the uh, 100 pounds and the Banham Zoo Perpetual Challenge Trophy. Well, here come those uh, two wonderful vehicles. Look at these vehicles coming in now for the Banham Zoo Perpetual Challenge Cup. The uh, first pair we see is uh, with the Harvest Tumbrel. Lorraine Turner will find out more about the history of this uh, wonderful uh, tandem. The tandem one in front of another, and of course, this typical uh, 
formation for the agricultural world. If they had to pull a heavy horse uh, home, then they'd put one in front to pull the load home. And uh, that always, <laughs> the way that uh, the work was done back at home in the farm to get the loads home. And then a man who comes every year, Paul Smith, every year here with the fabulous Suffolk punches, Pickworth Teasel and Locksmith King Louis. Paul, a huge supporter of the breed with his uh, lovely uh, vehicle again, well over 100 years old and looking as good as ever. Look forward to telling you more of uh, the wonderful sight that David Curtis has in front of him as he looks uh, over now the two of the agricultural uh, turnouts for that Bannam Zoo trophy. Well, let's take a look at the two agricultural turnouts first. Graham and Lorraine Turner bringing forward this uh, lovely tandem, absolutely typical of what it was to uh, bring a, a tip cart. This one. The tip cart, which of course would have brought in uh, roots, turnips, you name it, perhaps some straw and to get them home, one horse put in front of another, to pull it up the hill and get it into the bar. Got to be at the walk, all of the agricultural classes, and of course, the work done at the walk. If you didn't, well, you'd lose the load, and all that hard endeavor, hard work would be wasted. And of course, here we have the Shires. To be an example of the long feather which the Shires are so easily distinguished for, and of course, uh, all important to have a leader that walked on positively and with uh, purpose to get the load home. And to get it home, they had to back. They had to back to get it into the bar. They weren't, it wasn't the modern planning and uh, circumstances to make sure that they could get in without backing in. Enormously, they remember all those uh, stone barns? There had to be some backing. So the horse had to back so often the load in at home. That tip cart with the new shafts but would be well over 100 years old and again represents uh, so many stories and tales of uh, the industry where the horse uh, ruled the world. The harness 
well, uh, the agricultural harness wouldn't have the polish and purpose that the trade turnouts would have, but still uh, much uh, love, effort and hard work would go in to maintain them and ensure they were workmanlike and able to carry out the agricultural work. The heavy horses were the uh, means of transport and energy for the agricultural industry. So that's the uh, turn of the turners from Walsall in the Midlands with uh, the vehicle coming from uh, Carl Harvey and his wife who are again huge uh, contributors to the turnout world. Well now Paul Smith with the Suffolk Punch and let's take a detailed look at this wonderful breed, a breed that have been uh, seriously under pressure through uh, lack of foals being born, but that thanks to uh, the Suffolk Punch Trust set up to ensure that this breed was there for future generations has really helped turn it around. It's not a, a, a major turnaround, but it is very much something that uh, has done the Suffolk Punch an enormous amount of good and created a lot of interest in this fabulous breed. Shorter in the leg than the Shire and without the feather. And that was simply because the hard work in the wonderful rich soils of East Anglia didn't need the feather, which could be uh, then, of course, uh, on wet days, made to uh, be a real hindrance to the Shire, for instance. And that's why the Suffolk Punch became the uh, all-important horse for the industry in East Anglia. They, too, were, of course, were a war horse back in 1066 and all of that, when the knights in shining armor went into battle. And just look at the uh, wonderful vehicle. Suffolk hay wagon, way back in the early 1900s. And those ladders, as you can see, and the, and the size designed to uh, increase the capacity of the load. And of course, whether it be sheaves of uh, corn or indeed hay, all of them taken back to uh, the homestead to do the work. And with that extra capacity, a big load could come home. Important that the horses brought it home steadily and in one piece. You can see the ropes, the uh, water buckets, the uh, nose bags, all there to ensure that the horses were rewarded for their enormous efforts. And leading this uh, pair again, of course, one in front of another tandem, Colony Millennium leading. Colony Mi Millennium, one of the Suffolk Punch sires that produced uh, some great stock in uh, more recent times. No longer uh, a full horse these days, but a horse that certainly has played his part in ensuring that the Suffolk Punch is with us for future generations. Paul Smith in a moment exactly where the Suffolk Punch stands today because Paul Smith, one of the huge enthusiasts meanwhile uh, Judge David Curtis and look at that wagon the uh, wonderful Suffolk Hay wagon looking as good today as the day that it would have come out the best part of a hundred years ago. Paul, I know you've got your handful. Just tell me a little bit about the Suffolk Punch and where we stand today. Well, at the moment, we're on about 500 in the world pedigree. We've got about 23, four stallions. I think this year there have perhaps been about 30 odd foals. So we're sort of holding our own. Um, breeding to the demand. 
you know, there are a few more people wanting the Suffolk's now, but, you know, it's like myself, I've got a filly at home, I'll breed from her, but I can't afford to have a field full, you know, I'm just a, this is my hobby, and uh, that's where we are. Wonderful animal, but holding their own, and that's good news for the Suffolk Punch. Well, we're going to present the cup now for the uh, Agricultural Turner. It's the uh, Bantam Zoo Perpetual Challenge Cup for uh, the two turnouts. And David, let me just ask you now, I know basically you're a trade turnout man, but these agricultural turnouts do provide a site that has uh, perhaps memories for some, but give us just a glimpse of all the hard work and effort that went in to making agriculture, agriculture work all those years ago. Well, they're, they're outstanding, and the guys who've got them really can drive horses. They're proper horsemen, you know. They're walking on the ground. They're not riding like us, you know, lazy ones on the, on the box. They have to control the lead horse. Very difficult to control the lead horse. Make sure he's in line. And, of course, that how agricultural horses were meant to be. If you've got a tandem pulling a, a vehicle like these, then you expected proper manners, and the horse to behave uh, with the reins and the uh, and everything else that goes along with it. He needed that control, and of course, uh, my first prize winner today uh, is actually an exceptional turnout. Agricultural, it's got to be one of the best in the country. Uh, it's a marvellous job if you look at all the brasses on it. It's Mr. Paul Smith in first place, and second we have the uh, Shires this side. Yep, Graham Turner from Warsaw. Thank you very much indeed, David. Let's uh, move on to the presentations of the awards. And delighted to walk, welcome uh, Martin Gamer to, from uh, Banham Zoo to present a trophy that he has uh, brought here. Well, it is uh, Paul's birthday today, Paul Smith, who's won that. And as you heard David Curtis say, quite one of the outstanding agricultural turnouts there is currently in the country. And without the, the enthusiasm and expertise of Paul Smith, the uh, Suffolk Punch wouldn't be in the situation it is of uh, maintaining its breed uh, standards as well as gradually increasing the numbers. So ladies and gentlemen, give him a very big hand a very worthy winner of the Banham Zoo uh, Perpetual Challenge Trophy, Paul Smith with the Suffolk Punches, Pickworth Teasel and Millennium uh, Colony Millennium. Colony, of course, uh, the uh, prefix that was uh, used at uh, the Colony Prison where the Suffolk Punch Trust has been based for many, many years. So congratulations to uh, Paul for winning the Bannam Zoo Perpetual, the great tourist attractions of East Anglia, of which uh, Martin Goimer has been so much involved, but also, too, uh, is uh, a huge supporter of the Suffolk Punch and its uh, of the breed and future generations. And let's not forget the Lorraine Turner and her husband, Graham, with the Shires, uh, Overbrook William and Fairly Shire Fairy Tale, because that, too, uh, shows us 
exactly what agriculture was about all those years ago and how important the heavy horse was. Well, as they go on their lap of honour, I hope as they come past, both Paul Smith and uh, Graham uh, Turner, you'll give them an, a warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, they really are history that uh, is so special to the agricultural industry and what a part they played. Well, now David Curtis is uh, taking a look down the line of the uh, trade turnouts. And while those agricultural turnouts make their way around the ring, you can see for yourselves the difference in the type of turnouts we have. The, tra the trade turnouts, they of course were on the streets and towns and the cities of uh, this country. And they had uh, to make sure that they were a sight that caught the eye and got on with business. And you can see... Uh, the tremendous uh, standard of turnout, the uh, wonderful shining uh, harness and shining uh, brass and white metals that make up the harness. The vehicles, vehicles that many of them are 100 years old and some even more, and uh, they, of course, an important part of the turnout, a very important part of the turnout. And then, of course, the horses themselves. And it's good to see this afternoon that we have uh, more breeds represented. We have the uh, traditional Persians. We have the Shires. We have the Clydesdales. And how good to see them down here. We have the Canadian Belgians. We have the, uh, also, to the uh, more modern Persian that we've seen developed in this country by British breeders. And, uh, again, Shires at the line as we come now to the stand show for the pairs turnout. Now I remind you again, our judge, David Curtis, a man who would normally be uh, amongst the contenders for the King George V trophy, one of the highly coveted trophies there is in the turnout world. And uh, let me tell you, there's a very, very strong uh, entry for uh, this year's winner. Well, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. And the one on the left is the six-year-old, Busy B. First time uh, in the pair for uh, John Goodwin, a man who's uh, spent years with heavy horses, his life, in fact. And uh, this would be typical, putting uh, one of the younger horses along with uh, a more experienced horse, a real professional. In fact, the uh, nine-year-old on the right of uh, John sat on the box a real professional that would give uh, a young horse the confidence and encouragement to work as a pair. And that is exactly what the judge is looking for. If they could, step by step. And, uh, of course, you'll notice a very different pace that we're looking at now. This is trade. This is uh, work to be done. The more work done, the uh, more income for uh, the owner. So, uh, the ideal would be to have a pair that uh, really does move on. And John Goodwin has got a style all of his own when it comes to that, a very positive driver. And just remember here, you're driving uh, a pair of horses that be weighing uh, the best part of a ton each. And uh, if they wanted to, they'd have a will of their own. You as a driver have to uh, have uh, their trust and then they will trust you and work with you. The man's voice, and the way he handles the horses and all the work that goes into producing this stand show is what creates that.
Well, now a pair of black Persians for Roger Roper, one of the Norfolk contenders that enjoys the great sport of turnouts. Norfolk has always had a, a great reputation of enthusiasts for the turnout world. And Norfolk would certainly have them, the great Noel Abel, the late uh, Noel, who uh, always uh, represented the heavy horse world in turnouts. They, of course, were one of the great removal companies there was in the country. And uh, Roger Roper has very much taken that mantle on. But these uh, Persians are interesting, really, because uh, they, too, uh, are uh, animals that have... Uh, taken the uh, lines from North America. If you remember, the Persian originally came over from France and in this country came over after the First World War. A breed uh, rather like what we see in the ring now with uh, lighter bone, less feather, great movers, and uh, a breed that really got on with their work. They uh, were then taken over to North America and bred for a bit more size. We'll see a little bit later some Persians that uh, are more traditional of the French bloodlines that originally came here. But the uh, North American bloodlines first came over from uh, a turnout enthusiast from Warwickshire. And Roger Roper uh, took those horses on and has developed his stable of uh, black Persians that have come from North America. And uh, that's what he has today. Those high collars, which are the traditional show collars that you would see in North America. Huge enthusiasts, the rules of the game the same. The pair has to be working as a pair, working uh, in a very positive, action-packed space, the trot, and uh, creating the rhythm and picture that catches the judge's eye. Roger Roper with uh, Revoir and Tobias the pair of black Persians. Well, as they come in, David Lampen says, walk on, boys. And remember, it is the voice that very definitely is the important means of communication between driver and horses. The Chaff people, David Lambert from Nottinghamshire, with the Aussie Char vehicle, again, a vehicle that has great history, and the Shire, the pair of Shires. And uh, the vehicle from Aussie Char gives us the opportunity to tell you another story. Because if you think, just for a moment, about the feeding of these animals, you'll realize they have a huge capacity. They wouldn't just sit down to breakfast and have a few cornflakes. They want a decent square meal. But if you uh, gave these uh, sort of animals the uh, important energy and protein that a lot of other animals need to compete. Any uh, in the sporting horse world that have to have competition horses that have oats and uh, other important feats that gives them energy. Give these horses uh, energy and of course you've got something that is uh, very difficult to control. So it's capacity that uh, the modern heavy horse uh, needs. In the old days it used to be the chaff cutter and uh, the cutting of chaff, whether it be hay or oat straw or whatever, to make these horses happy and sufficient in the amount of food they were getting, but not getting the huge amount of energies. You don't put uh, high octane fuel into these animals because you need their loyalty and their power. And that's where chaff came in. And Aussie chaff is uh, one of the modern foods that have been developed for uh, the heavy horses. It's uh, got some lovely uh, taste to it, which of course have all been part of the research and development that have developed chaff as a feed for the modern heavy horse. David Lambert and his wife, huge enthusiasts, and uh, again, representing a very important part of the heavy horse world.
So David Lambert, the pair of sharks. So that's the Nottinghamshire pair of shires for David Lambert. Again, the shire with a bright, enthusiastic trot, which has made them, of course, a breed that has been very much involved in the trade turnouts for centuries. Well, now John McIntyre, a man who's joined the turnout world from Scotland. And Scotland have a great pride in their heavy horses, and you only have to go to see the horses at the Royal Highland. You'll see as many there in the Royal Highland Ring at the Fabulous Arena as you will anywhere in the country. And uh, this a combination that uh, went the whole way at the Royal Highland. Ronald Brewster, one of the young men that's followed uh, his uh, generations before him in the heavy horse world, and now a man who has uh, set up stables in several parts of the, of the country, and none more so with John McIntyre, who's taken uh, the turnouts of John McIntyre right to the very uh, top of the uh, turnout world. Again, those high collars, which are typical of the Clydesdale. We mentioned earlier, but if you weren't there, let's uh, remind you that the Clydesdale, not dissimilar to the Shire, the feather, lighter of bone, perhaps not quite as big but who have all the action and uh, excitement of a breed that actually will have and is allowed more white on them than the Shire. There are, of course, uh, breed confirmations that have got to be the rules and regulations of the stud book, but the Clydesdale can have uh, more uh, white about them than, for instance, the Shire. And again, you can see Ronald Brewster uh, really taking this pair forward. The trick and the difficulty here and the skill of driving a pair is to take them to their absolute limits without breaking the rhythm and the pace. And that's what makes the uh, stand show such an interesting uh, situation. Here we've got some of the very, very best drivers there is in this country, really putting on a great show for David Curtis, who himself is one of the leading drivers of the turnout world. So we've got match conditions second to none this afternoon. A lot of the uh, turnout drivers like going to Scotland to take home the Scottish drivers on their home patch. But the Scottish love to come back down here and take the British uh, English drivers, I should say, perhaps, to uh, the test on their home soil too. And. Uh, Ronald Brewster will certainly be doing that this afternoon. The Clydesdales of John McIntyre. And they finish off, of course, with the reverse. Well, the heavy horses really have, uh, all the history has stemmed from this country. But uh, it's been passed around the world and it's come back and has so often been developed in ways and means. And what we see now is uh, the Canadian Belgians of uh, David Moulin. And David really uh, highlights the uh, great assets that the enthusiasts of the turnout world have. Because David ha has a, a big transport business, but his love is, uh, without doubt, turnout driving. A man who's uh, developed his skills and developed his teams and the horses in those teams over the years. Started in the business with Clydesdales, but then, uh, saw these Canadian Belgians, the power, the uh, movement, the excitement, 
and the challenge of driving them, one has to say, too. And that's where he is right now. You might have seen the uh, teams of three and four, the, ta the uh, unicorn that he drove this afternoon. They are powerful. They take some driving. There's no doubt about that. But uh, just as any other working with horses, there is always the challenge of uh, getting either one, two, three, four, or whatever numbers of horses on your side. And that, with the uh, Canadian Belgians, is a challenge. But get them together, and there's not a lot of sights more spectacular than the uh, horse Canadian Belgians in full flight. The experienced pair, uh, Phantom Dirk, the 11-year-olds for uh, Dave Moulin from Hampshire. We go from Hampshire to another man who must know probably Great Britain uh, better than most. He travels during the summer months the length and breadth of uh, the United Kingdom. He's been around uh, the south at the major shows, went up to the Royal Highland, had a very good show, and now he's back down in the south of uh, the country, even if it is to uh, the east. And uh, this man doesn't matter where he goes, a great team at home, and they've all got to have a great team of workers because uh, the man on the box, maybe the owner, he may be the boss, but in the end, he's got to have people who help and team. And if you look at the entrance or indeed in the ring here, you'll always find a very loyal team of supporters who put hours and hours and hours and hours of work in. And remember, a lot of this harness may well have been out this morning in that rain, and there's nothing that spoils more than harness and brass when the weather turns inclement. But back they go, and out they come again. And here we see again the lovely Clydesdale pair of Garwin Holmes. Perhaps not quite as many horses as uh, Garwin used to have, uh, but three now still giving him the pleasure. We talked to Dave Moulin's great love of the turnout world, and uh, this man exactly the same. It's uh, a real love affair with uh, a great challenge of developing these horses to provide the wonderful sights that we can enjoy here, not only in Norfolk, but all over the country in the major shows. Not as many as there were, one has to say, but still a truly great sight. And the one thing that is uh, absolutely certain this afternoon is that everybody knows they're in a tough competition here because we've got the best of the best and a man who's uh, judging who knows what it's all about. Going Holmes. Well, now the Henfries from Sporting in Lincolnshire, Deeping High Bank. And uh, here's a family who, for generations, have been uh, Perstron men. And uh, Tom Henfrey has carried on that tradition. But he has uh, taken his interests, as many have, in the breeding side too. Down uh, in East Anglia, a lot of the famous prefixes have uh, bought over some uh, Canadian or North American bloodlines and have developed their horses to have uh, more size and uh, the movement that is associated with the modern person. And Tom Henfrey, another who's uh, bought young horses over, bought over one quite recently, a four-year-old that uh, I'm sure we'll see in the Henfrey turnouts of uh, time to come. So Tom Henfrey with uh, Park Casey and Park Anthrum the uh, pair this afternoon. And you can see from the uh, pairs we've already seen, the uh, 
longer leg, the size which uh, has made them popular. And one of the aspects of the modern turnout world is uh, more and more Percheron pairs have come to the fore. And with the likes of uh, Tom Hemphrey and, of course, uh, others, this has uh, certainly thrown the challenge back to the breeds that perhaps were more common, the Clydesdales, the Shires, for instance, and the Suffolk Punches. The interesting thing about the Suffolk Punches, of course, is that they essentially are an agricultural uh, breed of heavy horse. They haven't the extravagant movement, for instance, of the sort of horses we're seeing in this turnout class this afternoon. And that's where the introduction of these bloodlines have really made their mark. Again, remember, we're looking for a pair. And we're looking for a pair that's absolutely working stride for stride and uh, presenting that picture of getting on with business. Well, the breed show for the Persians coming up this weekend, and that'll be some sight. The uh, enthusiasm for the breed that you represent at a breed show is uh, something that is uh, very important. And I bet Tom Hemphrey will have a string of horses there. In fact, it's not just one uh, four-year-old that he's had over that he's keen to put on show, but two. Well, these units were watching is all about catching the eye. Having it right, and believe me, these turnout boys and girls, they absolutely know what it is to have it right. It's got to be spot on. That's what's been handed down to the people that do it. And the tradition is as good and as strong now as it is anywhere. And if there's one livery that catches the eye, it is always that of Aylitz Farm and Glen Cass. There, Shires, with Glen on the box, they, uh, that colour of uh, black, and I think you'd call it gold. If it's not gold, it's, uh, it's a lovely colour yellow that really catches the eye. And then, of course, you add the horses to it. It's uh, not surprising that the modern job for the turnout world is one of advertising. Still, uh, some breweries, it was breweries, of course, that the horses were famous for. The uh, Whitbread team of horses, the Young's team of horses, you name it, uh, all over the country, the uh, breweries, the big breweries, had huge teams of horses. That, sadly, is history, and it's now love of the job and love of seeing tradition and history repeated that gives us the pleasure of these sites in our arenas today. And Glenn is exactly one of those, uh, one of those guys. Glenn Cass from Holstead over in Essex, again taking on uh, a great part of history which has come from uh, that part of the world. Well, all of these uh, horses now uh, supported by breed societies, the Shires, the Clydesdales, the Persians, as I said to you, the Persian show coming up uh, this weekend. But it is those uh, heavy horse societies that are absolutely vital. And of course, they run shows, the spring show of the Shire World held over uh, in Staffordshire every year. And that's where the enthusiasm comes to breed the type and sort of horse that uh, is what is uh, needed to ensure that this is something that is passed down from generation to generation. And if you uh, see some of the shows, you'll see a lot of youngsters getting involved in these wonderful animals.
now uh, Billy Sheen. Billy Sheen uh, based over in Essex with these horses with the McMullen turnouts. And here's an interesting vehicle because once again it highlights the traditions and skills that are still in this country. A vehicle that if you looked at it you thought, wow, how old is that? Beautifully looked after as all these vehicles are. But that actually is a vehicle that was made in the 80s, in 1980. So not a lot more than 30 years old. And there are still these vehicles being made. They're to the lovely grey shires of uh, the WNH, uh, WS shires from Howe Green in Essex. And of course representing the McMullen Brewery. And still some of the family owned breweries still have these heavy horses as advertisements. And is it surprising? My home is down in Gloucestershire and of course there's the uh, Wiltshire Brewery of Wadworth. And if you go through Devizes you'll often get uh, stopped and wait and it's because the uh, Wadworth horses are out there delivering locally. And that's what stops and makes everyone look at them and then, of course, go in and buy a pint. And that's exactly what uh, McMullen Country and uh, McMullen's Brewery is all about. Those family-owned breweries still present that wonderful sight and a great advert for uh, their trade. Well, here's proof of uh, how this is handed down from uh, generation to generation. Bill Sheen with WS Horses. He, uh, a man who used to work under John Lawless, the head man uh, for many years of uh, Whitbread. He uh, brought those wonderful Whitbread greys to this arena on many, many, many occasions. He sadly passed away uh, not too long ago, but John was one of the greats, one of the legends of uh, the heavy horse world. And it's exactly these legends that has uh, really brought the respect and uh, enthusiasm to make sure that it goes on for generation to generation. So the greys of uh, McMullinsbury, the uh, grey shires of Bill Sheen, WS Shires. So a little look down of uh, what we have in front of us and all of the work that goes in to this great site. I would suggest on this uh, disappointing uh, June afternoon, you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together and just show your respect, your enthusiasm for this great site. This is real work and it deserves all the applause. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, that's more like it. Well, there's a battle on. There's a battle on, so let's uh, see what you think. The judge, of course, is David Curtis. He knows what this game is all about. The battle is by the Shires of John Goodwin, down in Kent, in front of the uh, judge's box, and Dave Moulin from Hampshire with the Canadian Belgians, his experienced pair. Let's watch, and then I'm going to ask you who you think is uh, your idea of, it doesn't necessarily mean these are uh, out again as uh, a battle for the winners. It could be second, it could be third, who knows? The only man who knows that is our judge, David Curtis. But let's see. Dave Moulin, down past the judge's box. Now I want you to put your hands together and give a bit of a cheer and see what you think around the ring. See if you get it right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what did you think about uh, the uh, pair this afternoon of John Goodwin? Give you, put your hands together. Was John Goodwin the uh, best this afternoon? Or is it Dave Moulin with the Canadian Belgians? Let's hear it for Dave. Oh, it's close. 
It's close. I wonder. A wry grin from uh, John Goodwin. And a touch of the uh, topper from Dave Moolan. So there we are. Fascinating class because these guys are real professionals. Absolute the best of the best. Well, the man in the hot seat, and I would think it's pretty hot this afternoon, is Dave Curtis. Just watch where his eyes are taking him. He'll be looking at one, going back and comparing it to another. But you just might get an idea of what pair he is going back to more than any other. Let's watch him. It's, he's easy to spot in that yellow coat. And he's got the double. It is the shires of uh, John Goodwin that takes the pairs this afternoon and the fabulous uh, King George Trophy. The King George V Perpetual Champions Trophy who does uh, get his nose in front of Dave Moulin. Give him a hand and the Canadian Belgians. In third place, Glenn Cass with the shires. The Glen Cass team uh, supporters are here. In fourth place is the Clydesdales from John McIntyre. The Brewers. Uh, generation goes on, the McIntyres who won the team championship at the Royal Highland and my word they were absolutely thrilled by that. So there in fourth, in fifth Tom Hentry and I make no exaggeration whatsoever you are definitely talking about the most competitive competition we've seen south of the border in recent times, it's been a real battle. So, uh, Tom Hempry in fifth, six is Gowan Holmes. And then seventh, the uh, McMullen's uh, Grey Shires. And uh, in a very, very high standard competition, it is uh, Roger Roper with the Black Persians, followed by David Lambert and the Aussie Chaff Shires. Great class, great class. Frustrating weather, but come on, let's give them a hand again. They deserve it. Come on. Well, David Curtis, you've had some work. You haven't done much all day, though, have you, really? Great competition? That's tremendous. You, all the way through, it's just tremendous. They're, they're, they're in adverse conditions. Um, the horses are all going really lovely. Um, it's very difficult to separate any of these horses along here and it comes down to we've only got one red rosette and personal preference it was difficult between the two at the top um, I thought the Belgians really went well uh, John's flowed lovely you know it's a difficult decision so you know it's a great honor well done David and uh, how's your own team I've retired them now uh, we've got a horse here been ridden and shown in hand um, but uh, we've retired from the turnout as of last year, so I'm, I'm enjoying this bit a little bit. I'm not sure the exhibitors are, but I am anyway. David, well done. Impressive show of judging. So delighted to welcome now John Carrick, senior partner of uh, Carrick Farm Enterprises, together with David Richardson. David, how good to see you. And uh, this would be uh, a great joy for you to see these horses, and particularly the farm ones earlier, perhaps. The great sight, isn't it? I remember using horses like this, not as good as this, but I, it's a great joy to see them back in harness again, and John is the real expert. Well, well done. And so let's present the trophy. It is that uh, King George V the trophy, which goes, John Goodwin has uh, won it before. 
but he'll take uh, great pride in doing it again. Well, Carrick Farm Enterprises, uh, they come from Swanton Morley, very well known. John, uh, one of uh, those uh, modern thinking agriculturists who has uh, actually looked at, as an enterprise, the farm diversification. So important these days, farming is uh, such a different job to what it was when these wonderful horses were uh, so much part of the force of the, uh, of the land. But uh, their farm, Diversified Enterprise, encompasses all sorts of things. A, a carrot guest house, five-star accommodation, self-catering, the Hunters Hall wedding and events venue, the uh, Darwin Tree House and Restaurant, the Park Farm Caravan and Camping, and uh, there's also two in Central Norfolk, your recreation and leisure destination. It's uh, very typical of what so many farming communities are doing these days. John Carrick going down the line, a huge enthusiasm. Of course, David Richardson, a man uh, born and bred to the soil for many years, was uh, one of the industry's uh, top writers, very much involved in the big uh, farming publications, and uh, a man too who would really respect this great site. Well, quite rightly, our sponsors going right down the line and Carrick Farm Enterprises, John Carrick, really does appreciate the uh, spectacle that is something that Royal Norfolk Association always likes to see here. A bit of the history, a bit of the colour and the very, very high skills that the heavy horse world bring to this wonderful grand ring and uh, they deserve every thanks and I know everyone around this ring will uh, join when they go out on their lap of honour to give them a very big round of applause. They certainly deserve it. And what about our judge too? Nice to see him. You heard him say he actually retired at the end of last season and here's a man who uh, spent his life uh, in the turnout world, very much involved with the Persians and of course down in uh, Essex in particular, East Anglia as well, the uh, Persians have always been uh, a breed that have very definitely gained in momentum and uh, a lot of support. And David being very much part of that. David, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure. So here they go, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, one of the best turnout classes you will have seen. New skills. It's been won by John Goodwin with a pair of shires. Second, Dave Moulin, who was thrilled with his Canadian Belgians. Third is Glen Cass from Ailes Farm. Fourth from Stuart and up in Scotland. It is uh, John McInnes Clydesdales. The Park Persians of Tom Henfrey. The Clydesdales of Garwin Holmes. And the Shires from uh, WS Shires and McMullen Country. Roger Roper with the Norfolk Liquid Feeds Persians.
Now, there's loads going on here at the Norfolk Show, not just about promoting companies, there's all sorts going on in the Grand Ring, as you know, uh, but also all sorts of interactivity as well. So these guys are searching for fossils, very, very exciting. There's all sorts here in the Norfolk Tourism Village. We've got Prime Evil just around the corner, Richardson's are over there. Excuse me, team, but I saw a rather scary friend that I want to introduce you to. Not Gavin from Dinosaur <laughs> Adventure, he's not the scary one, how are you? You are right. <laughs> yeah, right? thank you. Who have you brought with you? This is Titan. Titan? Titan the T-Rex, yes. Now, where's Titan? Where does he normally live? At Dinosaur Adventure in Lenwade. So, what sort of logistics does it take to bring some of your big, bigger exhibitions here? Well, he's been brought on a trailer. Um, I know they've been, the guys have been setting up for the last two days to get him working and yeah. running. And, but yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's a big job getting him here. And he's not bothered about the rain or anything? He's no, 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 he loves the rain. As you can hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, and I guess the point is not only for the Norfolk Show to provide a bit of entertainment for the little ones, maybe, yeah, or, or the bigger ones, yeah. but also just to heighten the knowledge of people knowing there's all sorts going on in Norfolk. Yeah, there? exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dinosaur Adventure is tucked out of the way, you know, <laughs> at, at Lemwade. But um, it's very popular, very popular. Yeah. And we've just added a new feature two years ago. We've got a splash zone, which splash is an outdoor, outdoor water park, so. An outdoor water park yeah. in Norfolk? Yeah. This yeah. sounds incredible. Oh, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And when the sun is shining down. Sorry. Titan. <laughs> yes. He's, he's, well up he's getting hungry <laughs> again, that's what it is. Um, yeah, when, when the sun's shining, it's absolutely amazing. When the, when the water park's on, the kids are there, they're loving it. So. Well, things like this at, at the Norfolk Show, this is a real uh, talking point, attracting point. The audio, the visuals, everything like that. I'll, tell you what, I'll let you cage him again, because clearly he's, <laughs> on, he's on the move. But listen, you can come and visit Science to Adventure and everyone here over on Avenue 9. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you very much. <sighs> scared. <laughs> New Founder of Crush Foods, we're producers of cold press rapeseed oil, sauces, dressings, and granola cereal. Crush Foods started in 2011, and in the last two years, we've moved to a new home at Saul Farms. We're now crushing over 200 tonnes of rapeseed a year, and this goes into the make our cold press rapeseed oil bottles for the public to enjoy. I'm very passionate about Norfolk food and drink and everything this county has to offer. I'm also really keen to show off to the rest of the country and the world what we have, what we make and grow and produce. Norfolk Show for Crush Foods is a fantastic opportunity for us to talk to. Meet the demand for food for that rising population. There are some staggering figures about how many more people we're gonna to have to feed in the next 10 to 15 years, let alone 50 to 100 years. So ladies and gentlemen, take an appreciation, please if you will, of everything that we've got to offer here in uh, this ring, this parade of farmed livestock, making a contribution to the job of feeding the nation. A parade is behind these Coleman's teams and it is led by the dairy cows and the breeders of dairy cows here in the region. Holstein dairy cows are the black and white dairy cows leading that parade. They're principally black and white. They are the milking machines of the dairy industry in this country and worldwide. 90 to 95% of the milk on farms uh, here in this country and throughout the world is produced by black and white dairy cows that were originally the Frisian breed. The Friesland Islands off the Dutch coast produced a breed that we developed as a British Frisian. And from there, with the use of North American bloodlines, we've produced an out-and-out -out milking breed, which is the Holstein. Dairy cattle farmers are represented on this parade by the Jersey breed, which is the high butterfat milk-yielding breed of dairy cows. Small in stature, but the, world, the, the world's second most popular dairy breed. Dairy cows of the Jersey breed in Australia and New Zealand are found in huge populations. They can all trace their original breeding back to the Channel Islands. And it's high quality milk. Milk for, but, uh, for clotted cream and gold top milk on your cereals in the morning. Followed on parade by the uh, Shorthorns, dairy Shorthorns from our any other breed classes. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the dairy industry in this parade. Let's thank the dairy farmers for bringing their cattle here. Let's remember them when we go shopping, when we look at dairy produce, we're supporting British farmers by buying cream, milk, cheese, and yogurt from farms which keep these cattle. 
Let's focus now at this end of the parade on the Aberdeen Angus and the beef shorthorn breeds of beef cattle. Group with them, the Belted Calloways. And those are three breeds which today are making a tremendous contribution to feeding this nation with top quality British beef. Those three breeds also able, enable us to tell the story of beef and its development in this country. The black cattle of the Aberdeen Angus breed conquered North America, conquered South America when exported from Scotland and have done the job of producing beef in huge volumes, consistently high quality. The short horn breed has made a tremendous impact on cattle breeding throughout the world. 40 different countries have used them to improve their indigenous stock. The white, the white felted Galloway, the belted Galloway, Scottish and hardy, and good quality beef in this country. The British white traces its origins back to the first cattle that were wild in this country, but very much a modern breed with good milk, a polled head, and an ideal suckling cow. The Dexters, ladies and gentlemen, come from Ireland originally, and they were developed in this country and improved by a Mr. Dexter who gave the breed his name. They've been exported around the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what an impressive line of Hereford beef cattle. Look at these wonderful white-faced cattle come out here in numbers, representing again a re-emergence in popularity of our native breeds for producing top quality butcher's beef. A breed that can tell a story of vast quantities of beef produced in North America and South America under ranching conditions. And again, it's something this country should be rightly proud of. And again, it is product, quality beef, that you should be seeking from your local butchers throughout this country. We follow that wonderful reputation that the Hereford has with Highland cattle with that reputation for being hardy and healthy. The Western Highlands produce the breed. It's one breed that can be outwintered under almost any climatic condition and it'll still maintain health and body condition. Following on from there, we come Lincoln Red, followed by Red Pole. And you have their champions of the breeds in uh, leading the parade in most cases, including that uh, Hopham herd produced bull that won the Lincoln classes. The Lincoln Red, uh, Lincolnshire, the Red Pole follows on and then we come to Sussex. So you have the three bread, red breeds that often confuse me and nearly get again then for a few moments uh, as part of this parade. The Lincoln Red, progressive in its breeding practices and uh, breeding programs produced a, from, a, from a horned animal, a polled breed fairly early in its development. The Red Pole is the Norfolk, the original Norfolk cow. Crossed with a Suffolk bull. The Norfolk was a beef breed, the Suffolk was a dairy breed. It produced a dual purpose breed, the Red Pole, milked consistently for many, many years as dairy herds in this country, as well as a natural suckler cow breed. The Sussex beef breed is again red. Its history was originally the Wheel of Kent and the clearing of the forests, the South and the North Downs and the clearing of woodlands before domestication of the stock and before arable farming took off and grass growing took off. The history of the breed, strong feet, strong legs, a good constitution, go to South Africa. Look at how they took to the Sussex. Ladies and gentlemen, we move from the Sussex to our commercial exhibits and also then to the white cattle of the Charolais breed, the red, the golden red of the Limerson the white face of the scimitar. And that's where we start the story of the development, the improvement in production of huge volumes of beef in this country. The Limousin breed producing 500,000 calves a year. The Charolais, still over 200,000 calves a year in this country. And the scimitar, a breed as a terminal sire, producing big, early, maturing, young beef calves. And also with those maternal characteristics, that give her a reputation for being easy to work with and easy to manage. Our commercial exhibits complete the parade. Before we go to the Haygates competition, let's have it please 
for every farmer in the region who's brought beef cattle to this parade this afternoon, enabling me to promote good farming practice in this arena, and again, for the efforts that they've put in turning these cattle out in somewhat inclement weather conditions here on the showground. They'll all look forward to interbreed competition tomorrow, and we'll see which comes out as the best of the best. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a representative of our panel of judges here for the Haygates competition this afternoon. This is the competition where we pick a team of cattle representing these principal breeds of beef cattle, and it is a competition which Haygates, the milling and animal feeds business that is still family-based and strong in this region, have supported and are sponsoring. Paul Haygate and other members of the team are here to support the sponsorship and make the presentation. Martin Irvin is the judge there, walking behind that first team of animals in uh, the ring, which are the Limousin team. He's walking back up the line with Roger Long, our chief steward for the competition, and he's now gonna just have a final look at each of these breed teams. This is a judging competition. 16 judges originally involved in making the selection uh, to come here, and we're gonna have just this final inspection from Martin. Martin's from Scotland, his breed, family breed limousins. He's looking at limousin, a team. Two blue teams, the British blue breed, not mentioned in parade earlier, a development and refinement and improvement in this country of Belgian blue cattle that were first imported in the very early 1980s. We had a man judging in Ted Haste from Shebia in North Devon, who are blue classes. He's been involved since the very 19, early 1980s in uh, promoting that breed. Crossed onto a dairy cow, you still get that good muscling and good flesh in a blue car. Remembering, ladies and gentlemen, that half the beef in this country we consume and we use and we export comes from a beef animal crossed onto a dairy cow, in addition to all the wonderful beef we produce from our suckling cows. So from the two blues, we come to another team of limousines. Ladies and gentlemen, just feast your eyes for a moment on that wonderful team of Charolais beef cattle. That Charolais breed, white in color, is French and it was first introduced into the country in the early 1960s. No one takes away from that breed its reputation as Europe's top terminal sire. Beef breed, you keep hearing about how the limousine is our top, but in Europe, the Charolais still reigns supreme. In Southern Ireland, the Charolais stands up in production terms to the limousine and its reputation for producing beef in mass volumes. The Charolais, as a suckling cow, terminal, a suckler cow, terminal sire, Wales, Scotland, the north of England, the moorlands of the West Country, the Charolais is still one of the supreme beef producing breeds in this country. The Simmental we have in parade, the Lincoln Red, the Sussex, and, uh, and the South Devon. The three native breeds are there in this competition, this Haygate's sponsored class this afternoon, and uh, they will compete in the eyes of our judges, and a final decision is now coming from them. You'll see the Simmental team has been uh, tapped forward, the Limousin team has been tapped forward, whether we're gonna get any more before the final decision, yes we are. So we're having a short line in the front, ladies and gentlemen. The judges' favorites, are coming forward. The team of Simmental cattle, Switzerland, Austria, is where these big cattle, this big cattle breed comes from. It competes in size and stature with the Charolais, the white breed, the Limousin from France, the two teams of Blues, and another team of Limousin. So that is your front line. Let's uh, just dwell for a moment. Tense moments here on the showground. Every breed society, and anyone, particularly if they farm these cattle in Norfolk, will be very, very proud to be part of this uh, competition and to have their breeds 
name associated with the winners. I've got a microphone if uh, Martin would like to have a few words. We're going to have a reverse order decision from this front line of five. Keeping the suspense for a few moments more. And we will hopefully have a few words from a young man from Scotland who is breeding limousine cattle at home on a farm up on the east coast, northeast coast of Scotland. Here with his wife and young daughter on uh, the show grand and his wife is judging our beef young handlers classes tomorrow right number five number five is the team of blues give them a round of applause ladies and gentlemen they'll be proud to have come up in competition here for this haygate competition number four in the eyes of our judges are the simmental team ladies and gentlemen very proud to have won this class a few years ago when they brought their national show here. Five, four. Three goes to a team of limits and cattle. So it's down to the last two. Number two, the limits and ladies and gentlemen. And very proudly and very excited they are, the breeders with their blue cattle. Martin, I'm going to ask you just for a few words on how you and your fellow judges saw this competition and uh, hopefully a few words of encouragement for the breeders. Here, you can go straight on to that one. Well done, thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Um, thrilled to be here. Enjoyed my morning judging the limousines. And uh, a nice little stunt in here in the main ring, so we're very happy to be here. So what we had here was the groups of four. Um, really enjoyed judging this. There's so much to take in, so much to look at. Individually, you break down all the cattle, and then together you're trying to find a, a team, a group. So whether they go in steps from bigger to smaller, or you try and get them all the same size. So here we've got the final five teams, and in our first place we've got the British Blues, nice, small, well put together, they're like peas in a pod, and as soon as I seen this team earlier, I wasn't going past them. I really do like this team. Second, big class of limousines, we've got a strong pen of four here, and uh, going different kind of style, going from bigger to smaller, which is nice to look at. And then from there, the limousines, younger team, a bit more of the same kind of size, all four quality cattle. A nice group here, I did like this group. Onto the cementals, even batch, all the same size. Maybe losing it in consistency, maybe one of the heifers let them down a little bit, but a nice batch here again. And then at the end, the British Blues, really strong team. You've got the big bull, the big heifer, strong team, but at the commercial end, just lacking a bit of power but all good teams. So I've really enjoyed my day. Thank you. And can we have it for our judges? All our beef judges were involved in the initial judging of that competition. And Martin, a young man from Scotland, they're giving his reasons to you around this ring. We've enjoyed all their company. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Haygate is here on behalf of Haygate's Millers and Animal Feed Suppliers business here in the region a business which makes a tremendous uh, contribution to the uh, rural economy. You have a team of British blue cattle, bred by Victoria and Jilly and uh, uh, Bowring, together with John and Wendy Late and the Beck family. Three families involved in that winning team. Let's have it for them. Let's congratulate them on this newly rechristened Haygates. Beef interbreed team, and uh, thank again the Haygates team. You've got three out of five out in the photograph. You've got Paul Haygate there, Je um, 
the man in charge, managing director of the group. You have uh, Nick Haygate there as general manager of the feeds business and senior salesman for the group, the animal feeds group in Adrian Covington. Adrian with a long career serving the company. The Haygate Company taking great pride in the way they look after their long-serving staff and the way they acknowledge the work they do on behalf of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, the limousine team that stood second have come from exhibitors that include Paul and Anita Padfield with how many? Just the one. The bull has come from uh, the Lions family, Lincolnshire. We have another lion on the other end of the rope. And then we have Mike Dickens and his family with a uh, member of that team. Can we have it for the second team? The reserve champions, the limousines from the Barwoods, the Lions and uh, the Dickens family. We have, let's pick out one more team. We'll pass both through limousines and we'll come to the Simmentals. And we have exhibits here from the county. Are they all from the county by any chance? One from Suffolk, three from Norfolk, and one from the Dowleys, which is the Suffolk. Suffolk. And then we come to the Norfolk exhibits. Clarks, Williams, with all three others in the team. Andrew Clark, Hayley Clark, Paul Walker. That's the uh, four in that Simmental team. Winners here not so many years ago when we still called it the Colmans. Can we have it for everyone involved once more with this uh, interbreed beef team? The cattle they brought out are magnificent. They represent a modern approach to beef cattle farming here in this country. That modern approach to cattle farming has meant we've used continental breeds like the limousine to produce 500,000 calves a year, the blues to produce between two and 250,000 calves a year, principally from the dairy cows that we maintain on farms. We don't need beef calves from every, uh, sorry, dairy calves from every cow because we only need a small number of replacements in a dairy herd every year. So in other words, to improve their income, they'll put a beef bull back on a dairy cow, and it is the blue the British blue as we know it now, the Belgian blue as it was first introduced into this country in 1982, that makes a huge contribution to that beef from the dairy herd supply of quality meat to retailers throughout this country. Let's just remember everyone in that back line, the white cattle of the Charolais breed from, uh, again, breeders in this region, the red cattle of the Lincoln Red and the Sussex breeds. And uh, the final team, one that is actually close very much to my heart. And that is the golden red cattle in the back line of the South Devon breed. We didn't introduce them on parade. They're here as part of this team. The South Hams, grass growing endlessly all the way through the season. Produced the South Devon breed, originally a dairy breed milking as well as producing good beef and a breed with very good maternal characteristics that is now being recognized throughout this country as well as in other parts of the world as a beef breed naturally producing good stock and good flesh in calves from principally grass and the sort of beef that your local butchers would appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, just before we wind up this parade and we say goodbye to the cattle and we say goodbye to farming for a moment or two, let's make a connection to the businesses in this county that supply you with food. You go shopping at the weekend, you go shopping during the week. I hope you support your local butchers and your local farm shops. I've got a list of butchers here who will provide you with guaranteed, warranted, fully traceable, principally British meat from pigs, from sheep, and from lambs. We have the Patworth family with four shops at Fakenham, North Walsh, <laughs> Sheringham, and Swaffham. We have the Archers here in Norwich. We have Icarus involved with you here at the show in putting out butchers' demonstrations from Cromer. We have Goddard's from Downham Market, Swanton Farm to Pork, where we had some gorgeous pork at supper last night provided by them. 
Arthur Howes is a business established, believe it or not, as far back as the very late 1800s. Wells and Burnham Market is where four generations of that farmer family have supplied you with quality British meat. White at Aylsham, Tombs back here in Norwich, Perfect Pork, Fakenham, the list goes on. You're very, very lucky to have families and butchers, experts in their field, serving you with meat uh, through their businesses. Yeah. Is that me again? Creek Abbey, Knights Hill, Kings Lynn, and again, generation of the family. In 1946, Bristol first served customers with British beef, lamb, and pork, and they have a thriving hog roast and outside catering arm to their business. They're just one or two examples. If you go farming for, uh, shopping for meat at supermarkets, just follow the red tractor. That is the industry standard. That is designating that the product has quality British produced beef. I'm just going to touch the dairy industry for a moment or two and remind you that Norton's Dairy at Frettenham, the Crickmoors at Fen Farm Dairy on the borders, the Wales is at Binham, and Dan's who supply ice cream are all businesses that have diversified from farming to supply the end product. And they all deserve your support, ladies and gentlemen, and you will be guaranteed to be supporting British agriculture. I hope you've enjoyed your parade. I hope we see you tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning for a competition in the ring and also for a parade again tomorrow afternoon. Well, thanks to Mark Claverton for taking us uh, through again uh, a wonderful parade of cattle for the Royal Norfolk Show. Again, the standard uh, so high and a great tribute to uh, all the exhibitors. Well, now we turn our attentions to the world of the heavy horse. And it is to the Shah we turn our attentions today. The show being a qualifier for the Shah Horse of the Year. And uh, our judge this year comes from a family that has uh, a tremendous reputation in the world of the Shah. Shah, which of course has been exported uh, around the world and has uh, absolutely taken the breed that has put this country on the industrial footing and uh, all of the agricultural world to, to other parts of the world as well. The uh, champion for the uh, breed this year being uh, the lovely mare of Brian Bannon, the Acre Wilhelmina, the uh, black mare that uh, took the championship. With the reserve Again, going to Brian Bannum, Akel Minette. Akel being uh, a famous prefix uh, for the breed and, of course, based very much here in uh, Norfolk. The uh, champion, the champion Brian Bannum, uh, Akel Wilhelmina, by a Tremblagog uh, aristocrat, and the reserve being uh, Akel Minette, the uh, Philly, two-year-old Philly by uh, Wally Charlie. So they are the uh, first and second, the champion and reserve of the breed, and uh, are the Shire horses that qualify for the Shire horse uh, of the year. The horse that goes through is the winner, Akel Wilhelmina. Well, Bill Bedford, the man who uh, judged the classes, the Bedford family, uh, been very much responsible for uh, the uh, qualification of uh, horses uh, uh, taken around the world with their very high standard of breeding from the Bedford family. Several generations and still the uh, Bedford family with uh, youngsters showing their skills in the breed. The uh, horses representing the classes today, the uh, first class of the uh, day being won by the Eversley Shires of Wendy Tumahalo. The uh, Eversley Shires winner of the four-year-old gelding class with uh, Pip Reed's uh, Briffin on Foxy, second in that strong gelding class. In the uh, mares, well that was where the champion prevailed, 
Leading uh, in the class, Jim Yates' uh, wonderful mare, Sheep Wash Derbyshire's Eventide, a mare that has uh, really uh, stood out with the tremendous success they've had now over several years. With third in that very strong class, judged by Bill Bedford, Big Jade Evans' is, uh, lovely Lee Pass Lisa. In the brood mare class, uh, with any age, with own full at foot, it was Brian Bannum's at Boulderston, Mr. Mill. The uh, Laurel Bank Queen Victoria, the Bay Mayor by Booth A. Richards. In the Colt Filio Foal, it was the uh, foal of that mare that uh, took the award. In the uh, Yearlings, it was uh, Mandy Ward with their uh, wonderful uh, decoy family, the Dam Decoy Royal Sunrise, coming from a former Shah Horse of the Year and uh, by being Menofield uh, Sir William. This one, Decoy Royal Highness, winning the yearling Colt filial gelding. The uh, two-year-old, well, that went to uh, the Akel Minette, who was reserve champion for the Shire breed. Born in January 2015, the black filly by Wally Charlie, and out of uh, an Akel Mare Queen of Diamonds. Second in that class, another uh, lovely two-year-old, and that was Jackie Carson's Nostrak Lady J. That the filly by Lee for Par Bill. The uh, three year olds, and again, what a good show three year olds have seen. The uh, three year olds, that's uh, headed by uh, Jim Yates, Cars Lane, Lady Helen. The uh, three year old by Akel Fearless, out of the Cars Lane Matt Angel Surprise, being a big winner for one of the foremost uh, breeders in the Shire world, Jim Yates. Second was Jeff Robinson's Metheringham Upton Owen, and third in that was Sarah Shah's Broad Minnelli. The Stallion, and that of course important for the future of the breed. The two or three year olds headed by Neil Andrews' Walton Express. Again, a lovely show of quality horses. The veterans, they too get their a moment of honour. One by Derek Spanton's Akel Ryan, a horse that Derek showed in harness on many years here, and uh, Akel Ryan now uh, 18 years old by Bordenog Master, one of the greats. And the second in the veterans, well, it was the Connor family's Aaron's Billy Boy. So uh, the Shire Horse of the Year goes to Brian Bannum, a great supporter, and he'll look forward to the uh, wonderful uh, final at the NEC in October that the Shires have played a part of over many years, but have come back very much to the forefront of the, of the heavy horse. The uh, young handler, and it's good to see the young handlers uh, still having their uh, moment, went to the Balderston family, their young handler, uh, young Will, with Laurel Bank Queen Victoria, handled by Oliver Chafee, that uh, won the class. That young handler between 12 and 18 years old and very much the uh, lifeblood of uh, the uh, future of this great breed, which of course has gone now for centuries and is still uh, as strong today. Well, the uh, championship trophy now and uh, that championship trophy being uh, presented by the Earl of Leicester, also accompanied by uh, Robert Moore, and it goes to uh, the qualifier for the Shire Horse and champion here. It is Akel Wilhelmina, the black mare, now seven years old, by Tremelog Master. Congratulations, and uh, a great victory. Brian Bannum, uh, such a great supporter of the Shire world and uh, very definitely a man of Norfolk. Champion and uh, reserve in that Shire Horse of the Year and champion and reserve of the breed here, which represents uh, tremendous quality. Despite uh, the long, long, colourful history of the Shire, the quality today, thanks to the Shire Horse Society, really maintains the uh, quality strength and uh, wonderful type that has come down through the generations. Yes, it's changed, but it's still uh, very, very, uh, very, very high quality indeed. The uh, championship trophy then 
will be, uh, I'm sure, one that will be much appreciated by a man who's done so much for the breed, uh, Brian Bannon. Amazing to take uh, both champion and reserve of that championship uh, of the breed. Well, they lead off the champion reserve. We also, too, have the uh, representatives of the uh, ridden classes. And that, of course, uh, one of the uh, new categories for the Shire world that has uh, developed and taken uh, a big step forward, which will certainly help the future of the breed. The uh, ridden Shah horse now also represented in the Shah horse of the year, developing the progress of uh, this breed which brings so much history and uh, not only interest but also employment down through the generations. And if you just take a look at the parade we have for you as it uh, now makes its way out around the arena, you'll realise too that uh, Despite uh, holiday times, not, there's a lot of young people still very much involved in the history uh, and excitement of the future for this breed. It's a, a wonderful story and one that Britain can truly, truly feel proud of. So, representatives of all our winners, the Everton Shires with their champion Gelding, the uh, Tumahalo stable with uh, a Walton bomber, the uh, Walton prefix, one of the famous prefixes, and by another famous sire, Kabilian Busca, winning the Geldings, the mares with the champion, Akel Wilhelmina, the uh, group mare with the uh, fold at foot. Just the one and uh, lovely to see. The uh, Bolston uh, Mayor Laurel Bank Queen Victoria. That one uh, out of a boo there, out of a Dothan Mayor by uh, a boo they saw, boo they Richard again, one of the champion uh, Shah Stallions of recent years. With the uh, foal at foot by uh, Fred Holt's uh, Joker. Coming past the uh, judges' box at this very moment. Again, a good season for uh, the Shire with a lot of very good foals, their premium scheme, supported by the uh, Horse Race Betting Levy Board, one that uh, ensures that the quality of Shires in the future is uh, going to be up to the tremendous standard set over the years. We're well, waiting at the back and the last out, the Geldings. The Geldings, of course, that we see in many of the trade turnouts and agricultural turnouts, which uh, ensures that the colour and the history is uh, maintained as a story around the agricultural shows, the length and breadth of Great Britain. The uh, champion uh, or the winning Gelding, Eversley Shires, uh, mentioned before, Walton Bomber. The second in the class, Pip Reeves, uh, Refine and Foxy. That one uh, by Oak Ridge Archie. And then in third, the Hillmore Gelding of Sire Shires by uh, Badafel Brigands. Fourth in that class was Lucy Blakey. Lucy uh, with her uh, Ruskington Kenny. A site which uh, not only involves uh, history, but work, employment, tremendous experience and expertise, and uh, one of which still lives on all those uh, many centuries in the uh, history of this great breed. From a war horse to the force of the land, 
to know an animal which creates uh, pleasure, interest, and also with the introductions of different facets, particularly the riding of the heavy horse, history that will continue the breeding and quality of this wonderful animal. May we, ladies and gentlemen, express uh, our thanks to not only Bill Bedford for the uh, judging he did, but for the exhibitors, for the, all of the handlers and the people who have brought the quality of horses again to the great uh, Royal Norfolk show. Let's show our expression of thanks with a lovely, warm round of, round of applause for another great parade of Shah horses at the Royal Norfolk show. This uh, grand parade of cattle, shah horses, and of course uh, all of the facilities the Norfolk Show given has been uh, given to us by the Shadwell Estate, one of the great names in the livestock uh, business in total. Shadwell, of course, with its headquarters based in the prestigious uh, nunnery stud just outside Thetford in Norfolk, it's one of the principal thoroughbred breeding operations in Europe and home to. Uh, three world-class racing stallions. And also to Haygate's uh, Country Feed, who uh, also did the uh, commercial beef and also the interbreed competition. Their support wouldn't bring us the quality of stock which we've seen in not easy times in the uh, countryside and agricultural industry. Our thanks then to our sponsors, to our exhibitors, to all concerned, a great parade for 2017. Well, sit tight, because we're going to up the pace after uh, a very high-class uh, parade of life. And we up the pace with the scurry driving. Already uh, our arena party from Wyndham College and our course designer, Tim Price, out setting the course. We're producing cold press rapeseed oil, sauces, dressings, and granola cereal. Crush Foods started in 2011, and in the last two years, we've moved to a new home at Saul Farms. We're now crushing over 200 tonnes of rapeseed a year and this goes into the Make Our Cold Press Rapeseed Oil Bottles for the public to enjoy. I'm very passionate about Norfolk Food and Drink and everything this county has to offer but also really keen to show off to the rest of the country and the world what we have, what we make and grow and produce. Norfolk Show for Crush Foods is a fantastic opportunity for us to talk to people that enjoy our products but also meet other farmers who grow products similar to ours and just learn more about how their year has been and how modern advances in technology can help things move forward. This is my show story. Looking for a holiday with a difference, with something for everyone? A Richardson's boating holiday on the Norfolk Broads is the answer. We've got a great range of boats, and it's easier than you think, and so much fun. It's not just a unique destination, it's a great adventure. Well, after a, a long morning walking around the show, it's time for a refreshing pint. And Rupert, you're the man at Woodford's to, to supply. Very nice to meet you. You too. Um, what am I drinking here? So you're drinking Narada, Narada, which is our first keg beer. We've been very much traditional uh, cask brewers, uh, but increasingly the consumers are looking for a broader range of different types of beer. And this is our first go at a, 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 a keg beer. Uh, it's full of uh, hops from America, Norfolk barley of course. It's really light as well. It's very refreshing I think, yeah. so, so very Moorish. And, and all our beers are very balanced, so this is another great example of a balanced beer. There's some malt flavour, there's some hop flavour, but it's kind of really refreshing. Well we can see behind us here that the, the weather hasn't dampened anyone's No, no, people are having buds. a few it's, drinks, still very early, but, like? uh, yeah. but it's good. Well, why is it so important for Woodfords and breweries to, to come to the Norfolk show? Well, I think the Norfolk show is a real celebration of all things Norfolk. It's absolutely right for us as the biggest brewery in Norfolk 
to be here and it's one of the few occasions when we go directly to our customers obviously normally we're through pubs so there's the landlord and their and their team first but on this occasion we're selling direct to, to our fans and customers and actually meeting the people who love our beer most well i know you've got a very busy day just remind me what's coming up in a couple of hours time as far as the presentation yeah no, we've, um, the president of the royal norfolk agricultural association who's the dean of norwich cathedral she uh, as in every year they choose a charity and she's chosen a, call, a charity called Yana, which uh, stands for You Are Not Alone. It's a charity that um, supports mental health in the agricultural sector. And as you can imagine, lots of farmers and, and people working on their own. So you can imagine it's an issue. Mm. Um, we were slightly nervous about this because clearly alcohol and mental health don't fit very well together. But all our barley comes from Norfolk, so it's absolutely appropriate that we support farmers in whatever way we can. We're also sponsoring the Long Service Awards tomorrow, but actually Yana is something doing something real, which is about helping people go through difficult times. And it shows Norfolk companies supporting Norfolk people as well. Yeah, which is absolutely right. Absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, you're a busy man, so thank you for chatting to me. No, it's uh, been great. Thank you. Well, perfect. Enjoy you your come, beer. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to come down here, we're on Drive Three. You can just hear the grand ring in the background as well. So just, if you need a refreshing pint or somewhere to sit down, or even ice cream, which is just over there, this is the place to be. So Rupert, cheers to you. Cheers. Thank Enjoy. You. Hi, my name is Andrew Fundell. I'm a partner in the Agribusiness Consultancy team at Brown & Co in Norwich. We are a leading provider of professional, agency and consultancy services across a whole range of rural, commercial and residential properties. We have 12 UK offices, as well as offices in Poland and Romania. The 28 partners of Brown & Co who run the business employ just over 200 staff. Brown & Co has a commitment to build strong, proactive and long-term relationships with both corporate and private clients for whom we always strive to deliver the best results and total satisfaction. The Royal Norfolk Show is a great opportunity to say a huge thank you to our clients, professional contacts and friends for their support. It's also a good opportunity to be introduced to potential new clients in a relaxed environment. It's a busy two days, but we enjoy it and enjoy the social side of it too. We're very lucky to have such a strong agricultural show here in Norfolk. This is my show story. I'm in the EDP gin and tea tent. The tea's being served over here. Rory, you're in charge of the gin. I am indeed. You must be the most popular guy in here, right? Uh, well, I hope so. I mean, why not? <laughs> why not? No, exactly. So how does this work then? Or what, what's on offer? Because I think it's like Norwich's gin. Yeah, so this is Norwich's first uh, London Dry gin come out. Uh, we have the London Dry one here, which uh, just won the world's best London Dry gin at the Drink Awards in London the other yeah. month. Um, we also have our newest addition, which is the uh, strawberry and black pepper gin as well. Look at the colour of that. Absolute beaut. So we've got some real pedigree here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're really good, really smooth. Really, this one's a lovely summery gin. Uh, they're both quite spiced, um, but they're really good, really good gins. Right, I couldn't be doing my, my research for you if I wasn't going to try a little I bit. I think it's so only gonna, fair, isn't it, mate? Just a pint, though. Nothing so we've got here is the, uh, the strawberry and black pepper one. Strawberry and black pepper. Now, I'm not the biggest gin connoisseur, but fortunately, my friend Zoe is. So, Zoe, uh, this is for you. A little sip. Hopefully, you'll find the fruit sort of come through first, and you should get a nice sort of uh, spice really at the nice. end. Loving there. that. All right, is there the other, the other one as well? And the other one here is uh, London Dry. <laughs> More, please. Uh, this one we use tonka beans in, which we are one of the first uh, in England to use tonka beans. Oh yeah, how do you taste? What do you I do mean, mean, I just get it in. <laughs> there you go. So, which is your favourite, the, the white or the pink? I really like the white actually. The white. Thank you. It is the world's best. It's the world's best for a reason. <laughs> oh, well, do you have a personal favourite? Or which is your uh, yeah. My personal favourite is, is, the, uh, is the London Dry, but I prefer a standard gin rather than a flavoured gin. I like to taste the botanicals properly, but I mean, both are great, both are great. And what's going down best with the crowd? Are they trying both? Are people to be honest, today both? the strawberry is flying out. Um, I'm going through, like, I've nearly done a bottle of tastings of that already, so the strawberry is going out strong today, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I'm, I thought the weather might have slowed it down a bit, but it hasn't to be honest. It's still going strong, well, right, I know you're busy, the queue is Vast past us, and I'm distracting you, so you crack on. Lovely, thank, uh, you, thank you so much. And it's up to you whether you go for the pink or white or both. Why not? It's not for shame. I'm a trustee of Wherry Yacht Charter. We're based in Wroxham, and we have five wherries 
two pleasure wherries and three wherry yachts. We look after these uh, five boats and they're all wooden boats, all over 90 years old, four of them over 100 years old, which obviously takes quite a lot of money and time in maintenance and obviously quite a lot of skill as well. I've been involved in the Broads in one way or another for the last 40 years and very interested in the heritage of the Broads and working with Wherry Yacht Charter actually is one way of bringing that heritage for other people to enjoy and to be as passionate about it as I am. So the Royal Norfolk Show is a great opportunity for us to showcase the wherries and what we do. This is my show story. Megan Jenkins and I live and work on the family farm in Shadwell. Here at the farm we have approximately 400 commercial breeding ewes and a small herd of cattle of approximately 30 animals, most of which are pedigree red poles. Norfolk Show celebrates everything agricultural and for me it's, it's a great place to socialise and network with like-minded people and in the show ring months of hard work and determination pays off. Each year we take approximately... Tim Price said earlier on, 12 obstacles in all, the bell's gone, and away we go with Sue Diggitts. First up, from Leicestershire, sugar and spice and all things nice. Does you like this one? Sue has going for some seven years, judges showing, done indoor, outdoor competitions, but this is what she really enjoys. There's one goal, remember we add four seconds for every time a ball goes down. Back out of the box, out of the box in uh, 17 seconds. I wonder whether you uh, saw her last year in the carry driving uh, magazine, Sue Diggins. Started driving after a spine injury back in 2000 and has really taken to it like a duck to water. Now the starlet. Spice, the section B, also written by Sue's grandchildren, actually Sugar completed the private driving and indoor driving class. Spice on the left, Sugar on the right, just four to add at the moment. Why don't you, uh, as she comes down the grandstand side, cheer her up. They love the encouragement, the ponies love it. Here she comes. Sue Diggins from Leicestershire, Sugar and Spice. Go, go, go. And with the four added, 84.13. Just that one error. So, from one pair, one great pair, to another great pair, Kevin Merrick. Kevin from Oxfordshire. First full season. Just did a few shows at the end of last season. In fact, this is Chris Orchard now, not Kevin Mary, I don't think. Chris Orchard. She's from West Wing, Kent. Carriage House Insurance. And this will be rough and tumble. Chris has been driving for quite a while, and she means business. Chris has been our fashion queen of the driving world for a long, long time. But there's no fashion tonight. It's been a damp old day. But she set off very positively. Out of the box, in good time. Into the slalom. That first one has gone. Four to add. Turns at the top. Six out of uh, the ones coming forward to uh, go forward to the championship tomorrow. Another four. Eight, two, another four. Twelve. Our arena party are going to be busy. And another four. Not going Chris's way. Sixteen to add. Down to the last. Sixteen it is. 16 to add, 76.06. Not 
judges are getting all the easy sums, aren't they? of course. Couldn't be. No fruit and nuts there. So, wife Liz went well this afternoon. She finished third. She's qualified. Come on, Nigel. Nigel Olive then. On course, into the box. Out of the box in 13 and a half. Christ Church down in Dorset. Four to add now though, tenth season of driving, and he's giving it a go. He uh, competed at Olympia many years ago as a young rider in the Young Rider Show Jumping Championship, but now loves his driving. Fruit, well Fruit's been a, a brood mare, bred two foals. That's on the left, 19 years old, that's section B. And on the right, 25 year old Nut. Did plenty club manic games, show jumps, but loves the scurry driving. It really does give these uh, ponies a wonderful life. Come on, this is good. Only four to add. This is quick. Oh, another one gone. Another one gone. Down the entry into the final uh, line. So it's eight to add. Eight to add. Must be uh, 65, 63. second in the uh, smalls. Shard at Adams Lane and uh, driving balance, rip and tear. Chesterton and Inzeri and that's not the zoo. She won Scurry Driver back in 2013 and uh, with husband Ian, he acts as groom, Ian actually runs the balance horse feeds uh, business at uh, the farm in Chessington. Going uh, pretty good tonight, despite uh, that drive earlier. The uh, ground ring really held up. In, out of the box. 14 seconds, good. Little bit wide in, but she's got away with it. Even lighter vehicle, I think. She's had in the past, it's really light which means the groom has got to sit tight and really get that balance right. If they get it wrong, it's so easy to flip over. This is looking good. Still nothing to add. Four left. Into the home straight. A bit of cheering here might help. Yeah, well done. This looks uh, to be going into the lead. Yep, good ride. 60.90 as on the clock. So balance rip and tear lead. Fruit and nut is second, and then uh, it is rough and tumble third. We want six, and there is four left to go. Well, Gareth acted as groom this afternoon, and his uh, fiance was driver. Now it's the other way around. Dark Horse, Fred and Barney. The little Welshman, the bouncy ball Roberts, gets underway. Comes from Hemel Hempstead. Groom his fiancée, uh, Kelly Sawyer. Fred and Barney's uh, fourth season together, at least. These actually Caspian ponies, but they are very, very quick. It's often Welsh section ponies, but uh, these Caspians are uh, speedy and they really put their heart in it. Gareth Roberts, Sky Drive of the Year, 2006, again in 2007, reserve in 2012. They four to add, four to add. Yeah, we missed that one in the early one. Well spotted to Timothy.
So, down they go. Four to eight. Still could be good enough, but he'd be a threat in the final, this man, for sure. He's not got a nerve in his body. Oh, look at them. Get down really low and give it to 100%. Guess four. Good time. 55 to 0, 59 to 0, and that is the new leader. Well done, Gareth Roberts. Wow. Three to go. It's the governor. Dollar and die. Jeffrey Osborne himself. Getting younger and younger, younger our Jeffrey. Based down in West Sussex, of course, in Chichester. The Osborne refrigerators, dollar and die. Judy Baker is uh, acting as groom tonight for Jeffrey. It is the Osborne Refrigerator Company based down in Bognor, which has not only uh, put this sport on the map, but has been a huge supporter for many other uh, disciplines in the equestrian world. Registered Dartmoor ponies. Really good to see these Dartmoors. They love it too. Another of our great native breeds, of course. Very hardy. Dollar on the left, dime on the right. Both 17 now, but you wouldn't think so. We'll see them go. Now, Jeffrey, 59.28 to beat. Still clear. Heading for home. 45 seconds gone. Could he make it? Will if you cheer him on? Come on, Jeffrey. Come on. Go, go, go. Dollar and dime through the last. Nothing to add. 58.80 does it. He does it into the lead. Well done, Jeffrey. They go into the lead. Dark Horse, Fred and Barney are second, 59.2. Third, Charlotte Adams, Lane, Balance, Rip and Ted. There is two seconds between the top three. Blink of an eye. Now, the young man, uh, James Starr. James Starr, 17 years old, Canterbury in Kent. And the mum acts as groom and uh, driving balanced, fast and furious. Driving since he was in short trousers as a 10 year old. Even our judges aren't in tr short trousers anymore. That's a blessing. Be an ugly knees now, wouldn't it? Well, Jay's been training with the British uh, trials team with Boyd XL, wonderful Australian world champion. And Charlotte Adams too, Charlotte has late been helping him. And he really is a rising star, loves it, absolutely loves it. Through the box very quickly, out in 14 and a half. National Junior Trials Champion, National Intermediate Trials Champion, and was reserved indoor last year with Fix and Mix. But now, with uh, Fast and Furious. Didn't qualify for the Smalls. Looking good. Looking good. Still clear. Time to be 58.8. Won't quite get that. 61.93 goes fourth. Very tight at the top. But it is Dollar and Dime who lead. Dark Horse Fred and Barney second. Balance Rip and Tear third. Fast and Furious fourth. He's in there still. And actually, so is Chris Orchard. But there's one more to come who could change that. And it's Alison Tucker. Alison Tucker, winner of the Smalls this afternoon with William Bass. Now we chip it down. qualified at the course of the year show in Suffolk. And uh, Chip and Dale, Chip's 12, Dale's 18, and four to add, four to add. Into the box, and out uh, quick, 12 and a half seconds, but uh, four to add, she could still qualify actually.
safely out of the slalom. Chip actually has been with Alison since she was just four years old. That wouldn't be many years ago. Now down to the other end. On go the brakes. I'm sure there's too many brakes there, actually. Heading for home. What about a cheer to see Alison Tucker home? Four to add at the last. And throw it. Just four. It's a good one. 62-53 with those four added. And that will be good enough to uh, get Alison through. And it means that Jeff Osborne wins with dollar and dime. Second, Gareth Roberts with Fred and Barney. In third will be Charlotte Adams Lane with Balanced Rip and Dad. In fourth will be James Starr with Fast and Furious. Fifth will be Alison Tucker with that last round with Jim and Dale, 62-5-3. And sixth will be Nigel Olive with Fruit and Nuts. You've won by the lake. Now behind me in the lake there's all sorts of demonstrations about fishing and tutorials, that sort of thing. But in the Broads area here there's all sorts about conserving our areas of natural beauty. The Broads Authority are here, the National Park, uh, Richardson Boat Accommodation is just over there. There's also a thing called Love at the Broads, which is what Lynn is from now. Hello Lynn, how Hello, are you? Hello Dan, thank you. Got your hat on, very wise. I have, not very good, but hey ho. It's all right. Well, you know, we're still making the most of it, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Now tell me, what do you do here at the Love the Broads stand? Love the Broads is a registered charity which encourages visitors to the Broads and residents to give a little bit of money to pay back for the impact that they have on this fantastic national park environment. So what sort of donation are you thinking? What works? Well, what works for us is that if a visitor to the Broads gives just one pound onto the hire of a boat or on a tempe on a cup of coffee, all that money comes to us and that money we then give away for projects on the Broads. So how much would you be hoping to, I don't know how many people can visit the Broads on average, is there a how figure on that? How many would you say, Dan? More than a tenner. Of course, the famous uh, sunset uh, display to finish. And a lovely broad grin on Uncle Jeffrey's face. That is sunshine, that really is. Well done, Jeffrey. great stuff. He gets quicker and quicker. And he's beaten the little Welshman. Well done, uh, Geoffrey. Well done to Gareth. Gareth Roberts in second place. Haven't lost your touch, Mr. Roberts. In third, letting the men beat it tonight. Charlotte Adams Lane. What's up, Charlotte? You've got a problem? Letting the men beat you? Yeah, a real problem. Yeah. The husband will be after you tonight. Fourth, the young star, James Starr, Fast and Furious. In fifth, Alison Tucker, Chip and Dale. And sixth, that's uh, Nigel Olive, Fruit and Nut. Let your wife beat you today, you know. That's not good news, Mr. Olive. Good night's sleep, that'll put that right. Well, delighted to have with us to present the awards tonight, the Right Reverend Graham James, the Lord Bishop of Norwich. Good evening, sir. Great to have you with us, accompanied by Andrew Barnes. And uh, I think you'll be lucky to have a ride with our winner later on, Uncle Geoffrey. He would love to be blessed, if we may, sir. In second, Gareth Roberts. Gareth Roberts with Dark Horse, Fred and Barney. That's the, Cas that's the Caspians. The right Reverend Graham James being uh, accompanied by his wife. Presenting now the third award to Charlotte Adams Lane. Balanced to rip and turn and I'll bet when it comes to the championship tomorrow, Charlotte will be on again. And uh, everybody will have to look to their laurels. Fourth then, James Starr. And you'll certainly be hearing that name more in the scurry driving world, no doubt about that. Here's mum Angela, fracturing his uh, group. Their fourth, fifth, Alison Tucker. She did win one earlier today, so uh, 
she'll have to be happy. So Alison Tucker, Chippendale in fifth. And in sixth. Nigel Olive, our man from Dorset, great family of the Olives, the kids love their pony club, mum and dad love their scurry driving, and uh, they are uh, great competitors. Well, a very big thank you to uh, my Reverend uh, Graham James, Lord Bishop of Norwich, and he's been invited to get on the back of our carriage tonight of our winner. So great responsibility, Geoffrey, and uh, delighted too that his wife is uh, joining Gareth Roberts. You're very brave, if I may say so, uh, madam, you really are. Have you been told the skills of Gareth Roberts? Sit tight. So let's give them a big round of applause. Exciting uh, scary driving and more to come for the championship tomorrow. The winner, Geoffrey Osborne, Dollar and Dime. Second, Gareth Roberts, Dark Horse Fred and Barney. Third, Charter Adams Lane, Balance Repertair. Fourth, James Starr, Fast and Furious. Fifth, Alison Tucker, Chip and Dale. And sixth is uh, Nigel Olive, Fruit and Nuts. Well, I'll we'll be back tomorrow. Well, Osborne Refrigerators have been such huge supporters of the horse world. And uh, Jeffrey, too, is uh, as useful as ever and gives us some great sport in the equestrian world. But a very big thank you to the Right Reverend Graham James and his wife. We hope uh, so you'll be back with us tomorrow to enjoy better weather for the second day of the Royal Norfolk Show. So thank you to uh, Gareth Roberts and Geoffrey Osborne, the one and two of the Large Ponies Osborne Scurry Driving tonight. Well, right on time, despite the gloom of our late June day, we have what is one of the great spectacles for you of the world. They uh, love coming to Norfolk. They love coming to Norfolk. Uh, if it was uh, a lovely sunny evening, it would be even more fun.
Now there's loads going on here at the Norfolk Show, not just about promoting companies, there's all sorts going on in the Grand Ring, as you know, uh, but also all sorts of interactivity as well. So these guys are searching for fossils, very, very exciting. There's all sorts here in the Norfolk Tourism bit.
So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the salute for this uh, exceptional display this afternoon is taken by General the Lord Dannett. <laughs> 